In 1950, as the Cold War heated up, the newly formed Australian Security Intelligence Organisation, ASIO, began using the latest spying technology to secretly record suspected enemies of the state. In this time of rising prosperity, many Australians could now afford cameras. ASIO agents could now spy in public without suspicion, even on the beach. ASIO also embraced the new portable movie cameras on the market. Even Conservative Prime Minister Robert Menzies owned one. An era of ASIO movie making began. But the movies they made were for their eyes only. Secreted away behind office windows, they covertly recorded May Day parades, trade union rallies, people arriving for political meetings and conferences, leaving theatres and courthouses, citizens under suspicion. They weren't the best cinematographers, but this footage, blurred and often out of focus, buried away for decades inside national archives, captured on film rare and significant moments in Australia's history. Much of this footage has never been seen before. ASIO cameras also captured the early rise of the Aboriginal civil rights movement. Like in June 1951, this ship is about to leave Melbourne Harbour. ASIO agents secretly film young people boarding the vessel. Nervously waiting on board for his passport is 21-year-old Aboriginal activist Ray Peckham. He is part of a delegation of Australian youth travelling to a peace festival in Soviet-controlled East Berlin. Ray is the first Aboriginal delegate allowed to travel overseas. When it was being discovered that Peckham intends to speak out about his people's lack of civil rights, immigration officials refused to give him his passport until the Wharf Trade Union stepped in. The full force of the trade unions came into action then. They said, well, if Peckham doesn't leave this harbour, this ship won't leave this harbour and we'll tie up every ship in the, in the ports all around Australia. The threat worked. Peckham got his passport. Goodbye, Mr Menzies. And Ari Fadden too. We're going off to Berlin where we won't be missed by you. But, unknown to the delegation, an ASIO agent had slipped on board with a movie camera. The footage looks innocent. A multicultural dance group rehearsing to perform in East Berlin. Ray is filmed watching. The camera focuses also on a young black woman. Her name is Faith Bandler. I got involved with the Margaret Walker dance group and she had created a lovely dance that revealed the discrimination against Aboriginal people. So I went off to Europe <laughs> as a dancer, would you believe? On shore in East Berlin, as the Peace Festival takes place, Faith and Ray are secretly filmed giving a speech to German factory workers, calling for Aboriginal equality and citizens' rights. This dark, grainy film is the only known footage of the first Aboriginal speakers overseas. When the ship arrives back in Australian waters, Ray and Faith's passports are taken from them. Ray's voyage to speak out for citizens' rights earns him an ASIO file. Over the coming years, Ray and other Aboriginals who spoke out publicly for their rights became part of the ASIO movie. Faith Bandler's files grow even larger. In the 1960s, hidden ASIO cameras recorded a movement for racial equality that was growing rapidly throughout Australia. Undeterred by ASIO's spying, it is Faith, Ray and others who lead a campaign for referendum, 
to remove discriminatory and racist clauses from the Constitution. There is a momentum for change nothing can stop. In 1967, almost 91% of voters said yes in a referendum that set the way for greater equality for Indigenous Australians. Thanks to ASIO's paranoia and their secretly recorded images, there remains a unique public record of national importance about Australia's little-known political past and about ASIO itself. <laughs> <laughs>